Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is going on, everybody? We went a little bit out of order on the episodes, but that's okay. I am back from Milwaukee Metal Fest. Thank you so much. If you came out to the show, you are my hero. It was a great weekend, and now we're going to get back to the regularly regularly scheduled show. This is episode 685, the handsome, the talented, the thoughtful, the... I mean, what other words could we use to describe Brandon Boyd from Incubus? Just a good guy. You know? Open the chat. Didn't give no no publicist saying you can't talk about this or don't talk great. about that. Just an open book. Yeah, and man. uh and uh it was a good one. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. You could have heard it much sooner if you would go check our new website out at gasdigital.com. You'll see there's a bunch of shows up and there's a bunch of bonus content up as well. When you go to my uh Joss to show page, you can just click on that bonus content tab. But when you go to the homepage at gasdigitalnetwork.com, you'll see it's everybody's. You got it's believe gas, you me. Gasdigital.com. What did I say? Gas Digital Network. That's the old oh, site. That's the old site. That's it's the gas. old me gasdigital.com you'll see all the shows up there use the promo code josta and while i have you check out patreon.com slash josta real quick i just want to thank all our sponsors of the, of the milwaukee metal fest it's real easy to support our sponsors and go to their sites and use our codes even if there isn't a code just go to their site and shop check out centurymedia.store there they killed uh, milwaukee metal fest all their bands on earth the sanguasugabog napalm death i mean i could go on and on and on centurymedia.store also monarchheavy.com somnuri crushed at the pre-party you can go get their new album desiderium over at monarchheavy.com use the promo code 666 and you're going to get 15 percent off of course everybody was visiting the indie merch store dot com booth they vended and it was awesome they had a ton of great uh, selection of all sorts of death metal grind corn and, and you know you know the deal go to go to indiemerstore.com if you didn't pick something up at the fest you can go get it now use the promo code josta10 of course the martyrstore.net is stocked fully with the leftover shirts we got flasks we got the Dahmer tea we got the the bandanas um, we got bandanas we got it all over at martyrstore.net and we will keep the coupon code running this week since it took us a minute to get this episode out also want to thank metal blade records make sure you check out the new release from death ray vision it's coming out uh june 30th and who knows we might 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 have a show to announce with them coming up we'll see go to metalblade.com slash death ray vision to check out more from them also want to thank better help go to betterhelp.com slash josta and last but certainly not least uh, Got to thank Prosthetic Records. You can go to shop.prostheticrecords.com, pick up the new Pupil Slicer, and you will save 15% off when you use the code MMF2023. All right, let's chat to the one and only Brandon Boyd from Incubus. Enjoy the show. My friend, the lead singer of Hate Breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jasta is in the building. That's what's up. Jamie Jasta from the metal band Hate Breed. That guy's famous. Coffee, death metal, and push-ups. That's Jamie Jasta. Remember Jamie Jasta? You know him. He's podcast, but he's also he's a metal man. I would say you need that. That shit is hard. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Awesome. Yeah, we can hear you good. You have a nice background there too. Are you uh, are you at your house? Yeah, I'm just outside. It's super pretty out today, so trying to spend as much time outdoors as possible. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you. I went for a crazy long walk this morning. I already got 20,000 steps in. You don't have a Fitbit, do you? No, I don't. Um I've been curious about those things though. Uh I have no idea how much space I cover <laughs> in a single day. It would be fascinating to find out. Where where are you located? I'm up in the Northeast in Connecticut. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we we just started to get some really nice weather, and I've been just hitting it. I've been out and about. Um, we we got some Patreon people joining us today, too. Everybody okay. was psyched that you were coming on. We've been trying to schedule this for a while, so thank you for the time. Yeah, um, thank you, too no problem anytime um i guess the first thing was that you know people wanted to know what was up with the new material 
I, I remember seeing like a, a a spin article saying you wanted to have stuff out by the shows, but that that didn't materialize, yeah. right? No, it hasn't materialized yet. It's proven to be um, more challenging than I think any of us gave it credit for, considering the uh, some of the circumstances around our band camp, um, if you want to call it that. Um, we're still kind of uh, one man down. You know, Ben Kenny is still uh, recovering. And so we are, that's, there's, there's that. So he's, you know, obviously a, a big part of our writing process, but then everybody just in family and we're home. And it's, it's weird how, when you're like at home off of tour, it's more difficult, actually. <laughs> it's easier to write music when you're on the road at this point. So, um, maybe once we get out on tour uh we'll start to hash out some new material at sound checks and things like that which we've done in the recent past uh we wrote gosh probably half of the last ep trust fall side b um during sound checks so okay we'll yeah yeah how's how is ben's recovery doing that was a crazy story and like if you don't mind talking mm -hmm. about it how how i mean that's scary for anybody especially now getting into the into the mid 40s how did he get diagnosed was did you did you notice things on the road no and you know just to i feel like be um fair to um situation with ben it's not so much for me to go into detail about i think that when ben is ready to if and when he's ready to talk about that journey openly i think that would be for him to do I can just tell you that he's uh, he's recovering well. It's just it's a slow recovery. You know, it's one of those things where it, you there are there are certain predictors about how long it'll take for, before someone is you know quote back to normal. And then um, sometimes you can hold true to those predictors, and sometimes people just move more slowly in their recovery. You know, and and as you know, once we're in our mid forties, recovering from like you knock your elbow on the wall <laughs> you're like i gotta go to the hospital you know it's just uh it's different it's different when you're older and trying to recover from things so uh, all that being said he's doing he's doing well he's uh healthy he's um i think he's in the right headspace and so we're just sort of like cheering him on just cool. take your time take as much time as you need most important thing is that um he recovers uh well and at his own pace yeah it's it's interesting to me because i i've been turning off the wi-fi at night even now with the bluetooth i'm like do i want to have the phone near my head do i want to have all mm. these emfs like do you do anything like that to mitigate your exposure and do you even believe in in that sort of effect it's a, it's, you know, it's a really interesting question because I really think that we are still in a period of time with these technologies being that they are still, you know, they're really new. They're spectacularly new in sort of a, a, from a human framework, even though we've all become accustomed to them over the last handful of years. And it feels like, you know, what will we do without our, our ear pods and our headphones and our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all that stuff? but we're not going to know for like another 10 years whether or not it's actually good for us and what the true effects of these things are. So I like to approach these new tech with a relative caution and optimism as well, because they point at um, certain things that are pretty amazing as far as uh, tools that are at our behest. But I think we also need to operate with a relative um, caution a relative conservatism around how quickly we implement new technologies across the board not just with like electronic but like with everything it's like this is awesome cool what does it do now <laughs> what are the right. potential side effects what are the potential downfalls of it i think it's wise for us to uh approach things like that yeah our, our little our dog own. here that's asking to come onto my lap oh, <laughs> what kind of dog yeah i mean she is Aww. a mutt she, she's what you call a chug. She's a chihuahua <laughs> pug, and we rescued her off the street. Both of our dogs are street dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'm down to one. I, I got a Chinese crested, and he's hanging. He's 12. Wow. Yeah, we let the hair grow in, so he's he looks like a maniac. He circle pits in the yard. He's... <laughs> 
it's, it's, <laughs> it's great. We call, um, those the zo- I, we call it the zoomies. <laughs> yeah. You get the zoomies, you call it circle pitting. I love that. <laughs> um, not to, not to stay on the, the topic of, you know, how these, this technology affects our brains, but the, our old manager, I don't know if you ever met him, Steve Richards, he managed Slipknot, Hate Breed, a bunch of ants mm. back in the day. He died of a brain tumor. And I, and in, in his, in his, uh, last days i was asking you know did what did you think it was from now we had these nextel phones with the bleep we used to call it the bleep where it was like a two-way radio oh yeah yeah you you put that thing near a speaker and it sounded like a drill and i always Mm. wondered you know is this like a drill drilling into your cells or drilling into your head and i know that there's there's weapons that they use right like that that actually are sound um that can break you know through different walls and stuff not that they would yeah purposefully market um something that was dangerous but mm. we've seen it in the past where you know they, they'll change the the frequency mm-hmm. and right now there's a 3g phone and don't worry, I'm not going to go full. I'm not going to go full Saran or what is it? Reynolds wrap. I'm not going to go full Reynolds wrap right now. But that 3G phone, I had it. I powered up. It is so fast. I think yeah. because no one's on the 3G anymore. Oh, right, right. I've just come to but associate I, whenever there's a G next to a number on my phone, the phone just stops working. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> whenever it goes into that like 4G, 5G thing, it doesn't work anymore. So maybe maybe they finally perfected 3g and it was just that enough people got off of it <laughs> had a chance to work that, that now it's fast yeah yeah but exactly. I, I, i've purchased a couple of these like emf mitigating like blankets you know when you want to sit on your lap you know with the mm-hmm. laptop on your lap or I've, I've purchased um these uh these they're like little plaques that you can put on the phone mm-hmm. um that supposedly mitigate the harmful rays but i I do wonder if we're going to start seeing this as we get older, like, you know, there, there was certain technologies that caused tumors or caused whatever negative effects. I hope not, but. Well, and then there's the uh, sort of societal, cultural, psychological effects of too much exposure to the internet <laughs> technology <laughs> yeah. and this is this goes into the same category it's like what are the effects of this and it is uh it's i, I don't know how to quite describe it because there is some part of it that is fascinating from a socio-cultural socio-psychological point of view uh the effects of interacting with what are essentially like godlike technologies but then not having the uh wisdom of gods alongside the interaction and so we're basically like when I mean, we are great apes with enlarged frontal free lobes uh, uh enlarged frontal lobes interacting with godlike technology so of course we're in a period of time where we're like tearing each other apart about what's going on and what's the truth and what's real and all these things it is fascinating it's also really kind of scary that we uh we online to no pun intended, or I suppose pun intended, we online certain tech before we understand it at all. And we implement it in the tens and hundreds of millions. And then we discover in real time, oh shit. Right. Whoops. And is it, <laughs> and, like and is it a double whammy too, because of the blue light and because of, I definitely know my vision has gone and they say, Any oh, it's just, of things. you know, cause yeah. you're getting older, but yeah, I, I, I want to mitigate as much as I can as far as the damage goes. But mm-hmm. my, my new thing, my new rule is I just lead with kindness. I won't do anything to feed the trolls or, or mm-hmm. respond in a harmful way or an insulting way, no matter how brutal it comes at me. Um, and I noticed that by doing that, it kind of dissipates that negativity in a way. It's almost like they know you're not taking the bait, so they mm-hmm. relax. But how do you deal with it? Do And do you read the comments? And do you read your social media <laughs> DMs? Your DMs must be just bonkers. They can be quite strange. Um, mo- I have to say, most of the time, um, the messages I get are are wonderful. And I feel really, really fortunate to uh, interact in the way that I do with um, so many people across so many years. It's 
it's a trip. I've definitely had my fair share of very strange and or unfortunate interactions online, but they've taught me a lot of things. It's been really educational and it's helped me to sort of like curate my online experience. I decided quite a long time ago, once that sort of interaction started to become much more um, easy and fluid, you know, where before it was like you couldn't interact with someone unless they had your phone number or you were with them in person. Um, our kind of collective online personality isn't doesn't show the best of us much of the time. Um, and so I decided, number one, the, and you said it, there's a mantra I have. It's like, don't take the bait. That's a good one. That's a good one to pay forward to. And then alongside that mantra, you might ask yourself, is this the hill I want to die on? Is this fight someone's trying to pick with me worth my time? Is this a good fight to pick? Any number of ways of, uh, of framing it, however, you know, whatever clever metaphor you might want to pull in. I've decided that much of the time, these aren't hills I want to die on. And I would like to have better problems. You know what I mean? And so, so much of the time when you're, when you're being kind of like lured or baited into uh, an argument or a fight somewhere online, it's just like stupid shit. It's stupid. And you can see that it's stupid mere hours later. And so it really helps to like stop before you answer, take a breath, walk away from your device, your phone, your computer, whatever it is. And to throw back to where you and I originally started, it's like, go outside, <laughs> put your fucking phone <laughs> down, go outside and walk around, go for a run, go for a bike ride, go for a surf, um, smell flowers, play with your dogs, like go see friends in a park. Um, it's amazing how quickly we've gotten away from these human interactions. You know, I, I know that like the last few years have been extremely strange and kind of unprecedented in what they presented to us in that we were quite literally locked inside. Like, don't leave your house. Don't go outside. Um, and it, I, the further away we get from that, it's like, what a fucking terrible, terrible idea that was. You know what I mean? Where it turns out that like actually exposing yourself to sunlight and getting like vitamin D is a, probably the best way to fight the whole thing in the first place. And the answer so coming from the top down was stay indoors. Don't go outside here. And oh, hello. You like that. You like to go outside, don't you? <laughs> There's another one asking for my attention now, too. Um, I, anyway, I I'm, I'm digressing I didn't a little stay bit, in. but. I, yeah, I didn't stay indoors and I and I broke a lot of the rules and and a couple of times that I did and it was online the heat was real and it and it and it lasted four, five six seven days and once you once it lasts more than like 48 hours it can get a little dicey but now that um it's all being kind of proven as we as we move forward it's all kind of being proven now that yeah you put in your putting your feet in the dirt and and getting grounded and going to the water and walking through the woods and and seeing people and hugging people and being close with people and talking in person was actually the good thing to do i mean even when we first like when we did the megadeth tour first or second show i said you know being in home actually i think affected people being being locked down and being inside affected people worse than being outside and being at these shows in the sheds with lamb of god and megadeth and there were people first couple of nights you're fucking killing your fans have fun killing your fans asshole but each day would go on nobody would get sick and we would go how they're moshing they're on top of each other they're spitting in each other's face they're mm -hmm. singing every word how are they not getting sick and so it's it's nice to have a little vindication but i think we need to keep pushing it and and keep saying like yeah touch people hug people get because it, it could happen again and we could mm -hmm. it could be worse according to a lot of the fear propaganda that's out there mm -hmm. but i'm almost at the point where i'm like no i got to just i got to hike i got to bike i got to see my friends i got to play mm -hmm. shows no matter yeah. what isn't that wild? All the things you just said could all be sort of like neatly summarized in the phrase, be a human being. Just go be a person. What do people do? People get together, they hug each other, they talk, they commiserate, they go outside, they eat together, 
they they argue they do just be a person just do the thing like get the fuck offline get offline around this stuff go and talk to people in real time there's a funny um i don't remember who said it it's probably a number of people by now it might have have even been mike tyson of all people there's a there's like a funny meme that's been floating around um it says like people that like talk shit on twitter uh forgot what it's like to be punched in the face have you heard this one (laughs) yeah you know what i mean not that i'm advocating violence but it's like there is some you learn a lot about yourself and what not to do once you get punched in the face once it's like wow how did I get punched in the face? Oh, that thing that I said, you know what I mean? And there's this whole world and it's a ver- it's the virtual world, but this whole world where people are throwing, they're saying things to each other that if you said that in, in person, you would get punched in the face. It's incredible. And once again, I have to say, I'm not advocating for violence, but you put people in real world circumstances most of the time and they just wouldn't say those things because of the threat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what but what what makes someone say like hey have fun killing your fans you got to think like what what would it inspire and it you know what it is it's sitting in front of the tv or 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 maybe maybe they had a friend who who got sick but you know we're talking about like the emfs and we're talking about ben's condition and we're talking about all these things and i think well what about the stuff that we can control like not having that 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 you know 64 ounce coke or not having the two pizzas after the gig or whatever there's so many things that we can control that's Mm -hmm. right in front of us but it's that it's the fear of the stuff that we can't control but really when we when we got out there and we hit the road and no one got Mm -hmm. sick and died Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then people were their 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 worldview was so challenged that they doubled down and that's what I would like to, I, I would just like to say like, Hey, I forgive you. Like you, you don't have to keep doubling down. You can go live your life and be healthy and control the things that you know are going to hurt you by mm. saying, Hey, I'm not going to partake in this. It's another place where this whole situation of these last three years has been tragic in so many ways, but really fascinating once again, from a, psychosocial point of view from a psychological social point of view it uh definitely like many veils were kind of pulled away from our eyes and um there's a probably measurable subset of human beings who weathered the lockdowns and the really intense societal fear that was very successfully um pushed into the social sphere but then there's probably a measurable subset of people that did not handle it well. And it's really just starting to show uh, the effects. It's rearing its ugly head now. People that are still kind of like wearing masks outside on a windy, sunny day who are still like, get away from me and um, making their kids wear masks when they're playing outdoors. It's like, there's plenty of, of evidence to suggest that that's just really doing nothing other than, um, confusing your kid and then have, giving them a harder time literally breathing um so from and a psychological delaying point learning. of view delaying learning keeping them out of school it's like there's any number of things that it's probably done to our general psychology the effects of which are just kind of starting to reveal themselves so we're going to be waking up from this process for some time especially the more we learn about um the reasoning behind locking everybody indoors. Um, And I I have a feeling, I can't say for sure, but I have a feeling that it wasn't so much reasoning or logic, but it was more sort of arbitrary guessing (laughs) that (laughs) led to some of the decisions. And people are going to be pissed for a while, but I agree with you. I think that we really need to um, lead with kindness and lead with uh, a desire to forgive. You know, not forget, but definitely to forgive certain trespasses that were made. Yeah, and I, I think we have to also push back on the on the folks that want to uh, assign like health to any sort of 
wing of politics. That's the strangest thing. Like, and I won't be gaslit. Like I I've had a couple people try to do it. Like, Hey, I've been listening to the podcast. It's kind of leaning this way. And you're like, no, 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 wait, 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 taking vitamin D or going out in the sun or taking magnesium at night. Like it's not there's, that there's no political lean to it. If anything, the, the pushing the unhealthy stuff, including um, just the sedentary lifestyle and trying to lifestyle and trying to keep people um, stuck to a screen mm. is uh, is is being pushed by both. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it incredible that we live in a period of time where vitamins have been politicized? <laughs> oh, you take vitamin D, you fucking right wing nut job! Like, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, a, it's a vitamin. It's actually free. I'm getting it right now. Like it's coming at me right now, even though I'm not in direct sunlight, I'm sort of in UV area and I'm getting that vitamin. It's really, really odd. I got to show you something. It's too cute to ignore. <laughs> Look, they're, Is they're this as a circle together pit? In, they're getting their vitamin D together. That's the so best. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. See, now I, now I might need to get a friend for my, my, he, we, we got him from North Carolina. He was supposed to be a, a show dog, but then the lady mm -hmm. couldn't take care of him. She got old and he was in the crate like for 10 hours a day while she was at like oh, some uh, physical rehab thing. And so now I'm thinking I got to get him a friend <laughs> and the shelters are like overflowing right now. My friend was at a shelter this weekend showing me all the different the mutts, the chugs, you know, the, the, the best one is the Corgi like mix with the German shepherd or is that's that what, what he, yeah, yeah. His name is little dude. He is a pug Corgi <laughs> shepherd herding dog mix of some kind. We did his, his DNA and we, it came back and I was like, Corgi. <laughs> I mean, he's got a cute butt, but I, I wouldn't have guessed Corgi. Um, the yeah, herding the dogs. Jug. They, uh, there can be the fun police sometimes. Like if the kids want to run around, like if my nephew comes over the, we have a herding dog down the street that they can, like, they got to get that herding, like kind of bred out of them because they'll try to like herd the children. <laughs> yeah. This little dude herds me. He, uh, it's, it cracks me up. It, it probably falls under the, uh, description of what dog behavioralists would call bad behavior <laughs> but I, I like it because he like nips at my heels when i'm after he like goes and does his business in the morning when we're coming back inside he gets so excited about herding me back into the house and he like makes these monster noises and he's sitting right in front of me here listening to me talk about him dude i'm saying cool shit about you dude don't worry it's all good <laughs> This show is sponsored by Better Help. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. Take it from me. I got a lot of things going on. Festivals, podcasts, tours, merchandise designs, bothering Brian to get on so we can get this episode out with uh, Brandon. Hey man, that's my job. <laughs> so... Um, when we spend all of our time giving, it can it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Um, I've, I've gone to therapy. There's no shame in that. It's very helpful to get a ton of stuff off your mind so you can just feel lighter, feel better, have a better outlook. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Josta and you're going to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Josta. It's never too late to start putting yourself first, getting your getting your head straight. Big thank you to BetterHelp. Go to BetterHelp.com slash Josta today and get 10% off your first month. Now back to the show. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prosthetic Records. They have just released the new album from the UK's Pupil Slicer. 
Great name. The album is both catchy and crushing and will result in multiple listens. Uh, and that's not just me saying that. Decibel Magazine said that. Uh, Revolver Magazine has said Pupil Slicer have leveled up big time on their sophomore album. The album's called Blossom, and you can go get it at shop.prostheticrecords.com. All you got to do is enter the code MMF2023. That's MMF2023, and you're going to get 15% off your order over at Shop dot prosthetic records.com the offer ends june 30th so head on over to shop dot prosthetic records.com and pick up a bunch of releases including the latest from the uk's pupil slicer who everybody was really enjoying on uh, on our patreon show the, their new album is called the blossom big thanks to prosthetic records now back to the show let's um let's talk about this new material like when it does come out i you know i've mm. asked a lot of guests would they ever go harder? A lot of people, as they get older, they say no. But I think mm. if Incubus did a hard ass record, like if you right. did like a straight, heavy, hard, like kind of new metal, but still rock and hard, like mm. I think people would go bonkers for that. But what, how hard will you go? Like, what, like how hard <laughs> is the stuff that you listen to in your, in your personal life? I think that the music that each of us listens to is a really good indicator and i only get like sort of snapshots about what everybody in the band are listening to when they're listening to it because it's part of our process it's like if you heard this this band or heard this artist check this out and sometimes it's like some new hip-hop shit and it's awesome and sometimes it's like the heaviest like black metal something from norway and sometimes it's like comedy rock and so it's just like it's all over the place um and i know that that definitely fits the description of what people ask me like what kind of music do you listen to and it's just all i can say is like it's confused it's confused like if i'm by myself driving i'm either listening to i love listening to um uh philosophical discourse i love the i love the idea of watching uh, certain humans logic and reason meet another person's logic and reason or lack thereof and to see the kind of sparks that fly it, it, there's something about it that's really intellectually stimulating to me so it's either that or it's like um super super heavy what i consider heavy music like i've um gosh what have i been hearing recently i i, I could go off on a tangent but it's like i so it's incubus doing a, a hard record um would be really fun i i would be really really into it um i resigned my uh attempts to scream many many years ago like decades ago the last time i attempted like screaming i think was on um light grenades i gave one last howl oh on the actual track light grenades yeah at the very very end of it and i think that was the last time i tried and so there's something about that style of singing that really fascinates me. Um, growing up, uh, like some of the people that taught me how to sing, whether they knew it or not, were like Chris Cornell, uh, Mike Patton, Bjork, um, Jeff Buckley, you know, Lane Staley. It's like there's a handful of people across the spectrum. And I've even toured with with mike um, we toured with faith no more we toured with mr bungle and i would watch them every night and i just never as far as like technique is concerned i never understood how he was able to transition between the two things to, to scream like a like a fucking banshee and then sing like sort of almost like operatically never understood it um so i watched certain people scream as like the whole thing it's like they find this place in their mouth and their face and what they're manipulating with their tongue and they get this incredible just violent sounds and it's fucking beautiful i don't know how to do it so my best attempts at sort of pointing towards hard music are going to remain like singing and melodically based so i hope that's not what you're referring to <laughs> but <laughs> no, as far but as like I Go I'd ahead, be interested to I'd be interested to hear you find other areas of your voice because I think that's something that now we're learning is that there's ways and Mike Patton is a great example. Um, he's I think continually found other tonalities and other areas of his vocal cords that he yeah. 
that he will start to work. And yeah, of course, everything should be done um, within reason and, and you don't want to like injure yourself. But yeah, it would right. be cool to hear you kind of visit different areas. Like, do you ever fuck around and like do like a dancing? Like, like this is what I'll do. Like, I'll, I'll do like a dancing thing in the studio, mm -hmm. like where I'll just try to be mother or whatever. I'll and I try to like mimic other vocalists just to see if I can like how low I can go. Yeah. Um. And and part of the, I, I think the beauty of some of our favorite vocalists is that if you really break it down, it's it's fucking weird. It's wild. Like if you really listen to Brian Johnson or Axl Rose or even Cornell, like on Jesus Christ Pose and some of those tracks, like it is, it's wild what they're doing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's super inspiring. I I do exactly what you're talking about. Not only do I have a kind of continual fascination with vocalizing the way that people vocalize not only with singing too i also am fascinated by the way people speak and um i just did it and i noticed it because my partner makes fun of me for the way that i enunciate my k's and my c's um and and sometimes just the way that i enunciate she'll kind of poke fun at it and i'm like what what do you she's like i just never heard anybody enunciate like you do <laughs> you know so she's obviously fascinated by it as well um so for me, it's like it comes from a baseline fascination with um, language and then the way that a person will, uh, the type of orator a person can become. It's really fascinating to me when someone can stand in front of an audience of people and, and, and change their mind, right? And merely with the sounds that are coming out of their mouth and the way that their brain interacts with the sounds, interacts with you know, the psychology within themselves and their own family and their karma. And then the way that it's sort of can change a room, it can change the chemicals in a room. Then you just keep sort of following that thread into the way that someone can take ideas around sounds and then ideas around words and fuse those things together and quite literally change your mind. Do you know what I'm saying? Like growing up, the music that I listened to, it changed me. In certain, there were certain times, and I know that a lot of your listeners will be able to attest to this. There were periods of time where I heard a song and it saved my life. I was heading in a certain direction that perhaps was, for lack of a better way of describing it, uh, not constructive. And I heard a lyric within a melody, within a song that I'd probably heard 30 times before, but it hit me right at the exact moment that it needed to hit me and it just click and it just shifted me off into a different direction and perhaps saved my life so this stuff has been forever fascinating to me and i would go as far as to say that it will probably always be fascinating to me so whichever way that that lands in the ways that i choose to express myself you know in, in song or in writing or in, in speech um who knows but i'm I'm excited about it. I'm excited about its continual potential. Um, and that also brings up, if you don't mind me kind of like following this thread for a moment, writing music with, you know, old friends in this case, you know, Mike Einziger from, from our band. I've known Mike since we were, we met when we got to sixth grade and I met uh, our drummer Jose when we were got into fourth grade. So these, these are my oldest friends in the world. Right. And we make music together still. Um, it's super fascinating from that perspective as well to see what sort of mic will present to me. You're like, check out this guitar riff. Sometimes it's like really hard. Like, like there's just like ooze on it from the primordial depths, you know? And I'm like, fuck yes. And it brings out something in me. What I do to it, it essentially is a reaction to what he's presenting. It's like an aesthetic reaction. Um, and then sometimes he'll present stuff that sounds like he kind of yanked it down from an ethereal realm. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is amazing. And it pulls out a different voice out of me as well. And then sometimes I'll present sort of uh, unattached melodies with lyrics to Michael. And he's like, weird. Can I write something to this? You know, and so it goes, the conversation goes both ways. So to answer your question, about new material it really is just a matter of time before we start to churn out new material um 
and I'm just excited about what that could be because we don't really put um, limits on that. There's no part of us in our writing process that's like, you're not allowed to do that. You know what I mean? Like anything is fair game for us. Like we just, it's fully, it's just a fully open door. It's a, it, it's a door that swings sort of both ways. It doesn't matter what it is. If it sounds cool, like we're into it. Does that make sense? Yeah, especially if it's authentic. Like I could see you like just saying, hey, I'm just going to, like say if you did decide to go hard, like, even, if it, <laughs> even if it wasn't like, even if it wasn't screaming, but say you were going to spit like hot fire, like lava <laughs> bars, like a lava 16, I would be like, yeah. whoa, Brandon is fucking spitting hot fire on this. People would probably really love that as long as it's authentic mm. and it, and it's coming from a place of, of um, like real creative inspiration. But yeah. I, I do think that's one of the, the great, things about incubus and your staying power is that you're not really painted into any lane like you could do a total white pony style album or you could do a freaking refused shape of you know punk to come type of album or you could do like a, a an emo rock kind of yeah. <laughs> or even like a like the hives or something like you really not mm -hmm. you're not pigeonholed in that way but what, yeah, what do you think? Like, what would be the best? What would be the best direction for the next one? Just big soaring rock hits with the melodies and the sing-alongs, or <laughs> or could you go weird? Could you go avant-garde? I'm super into like conceptually speaking. If we were just like, if we were going to conceptualize a record first, I would I would go as weird as possible. I, I like I have a definitely have come to understand that I have a penchant for. Uh, wanting to write like a memorable chorus um and i'm not trying to consciously move away from that because i don't think there's anything wrong with being able to you know, like, remember what you just heard that being said i've always had a fascination with music that was purposefully challenging you know like um loved john zorn growing up i don't know if you know who that yeah naked um, city and the naked city stuff well specifically naked city that was some of my first exposure to music that was that made me ask fundamental questions like why on earth did they do that did they was that purposeful are they improvising like and then i got to start of it you know enjoy it like start to come to a place where um you think someone's going to make a right turn and then make a left turn or, or they make a u-turn like why are we doing that what, now we're doing donuts okay I guess this is fun, you know, and then I started to kind of get a taste for that type of thing. Another band I really liked growing up, completely other end of the spectrum, was this group called Shudder to Think. Did you ever hear them? Yeah, I saw them uh, Saw them open for Fugazi. Oh, wow. Interesting. I never got to see Shudder to Think play. I saw a side project called Mind Science of Mind. Um, it was, it was a, I think, a relatively short-lived project. Um, and if I'm not mistaken. I do believe Jeff Buckley was playing bass on this particular show in New York City. Wow! <laughs> Which is the only time I got to see Buckley live, but he obviously wasn't. He wasn't doing his his own thing. Um, I forgot what your original question was, or if there like, was one. If well, I I was talking to my booking agent. And he was telling me how you guys packed out Red Rocks and his one of his bands that he books, Animals as Leaders. I think supported oh, yeah. you, and yeah. so I was I was going to ask about that because I thought, yeah, you could do like in a real experimental. Like I would love to hear you try to write melodies over that style of track or or collaborate with them because yeah. it would be such a a cool way to bob and weave, um, in and out. I mean. Yeah, and you're talking about experimental music, so I guess it it relates in that way. Where if you could put out a new incubus and and really go challenging with different time signatures and all sorts of noodling, and I know people don't like the term noodling, but I love it. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you know, that it's interesting because if there was ever a time where um, artists, established artists, had sort of a, a free pass to noodle, I feel like it would be right now nobody buys albums anymore it's we make albums essentially for free the music is essentially free and then we you know come to uh our, our, the way we make a living is by touring and, and the sort of um the stuff that comes along with that which is such an incredible blessing and we're we're 
we've never taken that for granted. The, the fact that people still show up to our concerts, it's really an amazing thing. Um, but uh, we're not, we were never even shooting for like, like if a song was playable on the radio, we, we've always just wanted to have an authentic voice. And even if that meant the songs were like accessible, as long as they're authentic and you're speaking your truth, expressing yourself authentically, then, then that's awesome. It doesn't matter what it sounds like, you know. Um, occasionally, that's been met with some pushback from our hardcore fans, but sometimes they push back and then sometimes they let it in. They're like, damn it. I kind of love that one love song you guys wrote. <laughs> Motherfucker is like, God, I love that song that I hated at one point, you know. Um, but I agree with you. I, I uh, would love to be presented with uh, challenging music to write to. And I, I, I don't want to like, uh, I don't want to be a dick about this, but I have been working on side project stuff with other musicians who I can't tell you who it is that are much more. What about uh, a hint? Experimental. Um, a little hint. I'll just tell you that it's more pointing towards what you're talking about. And some okay. of the music is harder than what I've been doing sort of recently. So yes to your question. And I also, I just know, I know in my sort of, uh, in my fibers that, uh, we're going to be on tour this summer. We're going to be watching a bunch of bands on festivals in Europe, and we're going to be, you know, playing a ton of shows. And Mike is going to be like, what do you think about this riff? And it's going to be like, there it is. And it's just going to crack the whole dam open and the, the floodgates will come. You know, it's uh, our, some of our most like widely listened to albums as Incubus were written in, um, we had this uh, 16 week principle where we would take eight weeks to write a record from nothing to completion and eight weeks to record it. So we did um, Make Yourself That Way. We did uh, essentially Morning View That Way. It took a little bit longer with... Um, no, A Coral Up to the Murder was pretty quick as well. It's like when we give ourselves too much time, we think too much about it. We, it's, I think we need to re-implement the maybe even less time. It's like you got four yeah. weeks to write a whole record. Go. Bang it out. You, you don't get too precious about it. You just sort of like, you know, do your best to hit the ground running and just write, 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 write. Edit later. Doesn't that sound fun? Well, yeah. No, that's that's what I need to do because it's, it's so easy to complicate things. So it's really hard to simplify. And it's never truly done. You just, I always say it's never truly done. You just walk away. Today's episode is brought to you by Indie Merch Store, one of our longest running and best sponsors and sponsor of the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Also a vendor. They were great. Their, their, their booth was packed every day. They were killing it. And uh, right now they have pre-orders up for the new Signs of the Swarm, which that is banging. We played that on the music show. Uh, people are really digging that. Plus they have restocks of all the classic Cannibal Corpse vinyl, like um, Vile, the bleeding. Um, and you know, I noticed they have the blood incantation star spawn 12 inch up uh, in their featured items and blood incantation, man, they, they really, they, they were up there for like a real standout of the Milwaukee metal fest. I gotta say they were not, not maybe not people's headliner status, but definitely made a case for being main stage made the all-star team for next year. I definitely think so. You know, you never want to do too many repeats in the lineup year after sure. year, but that's one that you could see like people would be really stoked. Uh, head on over to IndieMerchStore.com. You'll see all the deals. They even have restocks like Death Screaming Bloody Gore's t-shirt or the Job for a Cowboy and Campaign t-shirt or even that Necrophagious, the Stillborn One t-shirt, which someone stole from me at our uh, show and I, you know, I hung it up outside at, at mystic festival on the fence. Somebody grabbed it real quick. I just hung it out to dry. You gotta be very careful of that. Luckily I can just go get a new one and use the code Josta 10 at indie store.com. That's Josta 10 type that in. And you're going to get 10% off your order at indie store.com. While I have you, I also want to thank Monarch Heavy, another one of our great Milwaukee Metal Fest sponsors. Somnuri played the pre-party. A bunch of their bands played the show. They're just an awesome label doing great things right now. And they're, they're, they got one of these bands that I think we need to get for 2024. I'm talking about Creeping Death. And you can get their record right now. Go to 
mrnkheavy.com. That's M-R-N-K M-R-N-K heavy. mrnkheavy.com. Link will be in the show notes. Use the promo code 666 and you will save 15% off your order. You can uh, you can get the Somnuri, you can get the Creeping Death, and you can get a bunch of other great artists. Big thank you to monarchheavy.com. Promo code 666 gets you 15% off. Now back to the show. I know some of your fans are going to tune into this show and they've never heard of me or Hatebreed, and, and they might be like, what is this guy talking about? They might want you to go softer. And I would, I would say, <laughs> I would say more power to you. Like, right. I, I, I forget who I was talking to, but it, it was from a pretty heavy band and they're like, Oh, we got this real, like, um, Oh, I remember, but I, I actually shouldn't say because it's not out yet. But they, I said, they said, we have this real soft song. It might turn some people off. It's super soft. Like it's the softest one we've ever done. And I was like, Whoa. So you're going the softest you've ever gone. And they said, yeah. And the label really thinks it could be big. And I was like, well, how like Hoobastank, like soft, like how, <laughs> like prom core, like what, like wedding core, what it like, how yeah. soft are we talking? And they're like, yeah, yeah. It's like the reason like Hoobastank soft. And I was like, well, I mean, you could buy a house if it, if it hits. So, and, and, and what's wrong with, what's wrong with that song? Like anybody who hates on that song, you know, has a kid who's going to dance to it at the prom or a, or a child that will get married and it will be played at the wedding and everybody will be singing it. Yeah. But do you have is, if you like, like it, that you in like you? It. I think so. I mean, we Incubus has definitely done. I've never heard the term prom core or what was the other one? Wedding core? <laughs> yeah. Never heard those terms, but I'm down, man. Like we've written those songs quite a few times. Yeah, you got and, a prom core. You got a couple prom core, but they're they're bangers though. Like in that world, they're undeniable. Right. I love those terms. I'm, so those are those those terms are getting fully hijacked from you. I hope you don't mind. You also you just Go said something. Me. Yeah, you said something that is uh, is really interesting and also very telling of the writing process. And I think of the creative process in general. Um, and I don't remember what your exact words were, but it alludes to a quote about poetry. And I feel bad that I don't know who said the quote, but I'm going to paraphrase it anyway. A poem is never finished, only abandoned. Yeah. And it's, it's so similar with songs. People ask us all the time, like, and I'm sure you've been asked this many times as well, like, how do you know when the song is done? And the question, the, the answer I've always had is like, you just sort of know that you, or you, or you get sick of tinkering, with it, yeah. <laughs> you know? which means you're just kind of abandoning it. Like you walk away from it and then you hear it a couple of days later. You're like, Oh fuck, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's done. All right. Print. You know? <laughs> yeah. Or if you're singing it on the way home from the studio or you want to go listen to the demo again and again, yeah. then yeah, then you're on to something. Lately I've been I've been listening. <laughs> I revisited Ramon's brain drain because Pet Cemetery I could listen to like over and over and over and over. But uh also like a stone, um mm. audio slave, it just crushes me every time the lyrics are so good. And I can imagine it was probably not one of these songs that they labored over because it's mm. like verse, core, pre chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a beauty in that. And I like, don't get me wrong, I love the animals as leaders and the Devin Townsends and the rushes and the real challenging death metal and technical death metal. I love all that. But man, there is something when a lyric and a melody comes together and you just, mm -hmm. you don't need anything else and you could just mm -hmm. listen on repeat. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with you. And I'll just add to that, that I really do believe that their music is sort of an infinite space. And um, so there's no, there's really no wrong answers. Maybe there've been a couple of wrong answers in the form of songs that none of us ever want to hear again we heard once and we <laughs> you know we stopped playing them midway through we were like no no i'm sorry and you had to take like a music break for a week just because the song was so fucking stupid you know what i mean everyone should i say like that. <laughs> should i say which song <laughs> if you say which song i'll say which song. <laughs> well hold on hold on hold on because uh, there have been a couple um no, you know what? I'm, no, I'm not, not going to say. <laughs> That'll be the one people, pull quote. <laughs> some people love those songs. And it, it, one of the other amazing things about music and art in general is it's sort of, it's, it's vast subjectivity. You know, what is life-changing for one person can be absolute ear diarrhea to somebody else. And so <laughs> be it. Um, but back to your point about um, a, a simple melody and a lyric that hits 
to me, there's something really fascinating about that phenomenon coming from, especially coming from you, you know, you know, you're known for a much sort of a harder kind of music and Incubus, you know, obviously we've had our hard moments, but we've, we've run the spectrum a bit as well. Um, it's actually harder to write a, a melody and a lyric with a simple piece of music that lasts to me that's the hardest thing to do that's it's been harder for me which is one of the reasons why i've been fascinated by it like i i look i sort of scan the field and there's the easy route which usually presents itself really quickly in lots of different domains not just in music or art and then there's a, a more kind of a, a treacherous minefield with dark storm clouds hovering over it and screams coming from the valley just beyond it and for some reason i've always been like i want to go that way <laughs> let's go let's go see what's over there let's go see what's on the other side and what's wild and this is a a, a point that i've definitely uh, brought up in in different iterations before but what's wild about that is that what's on the other side of those things literally and metaphorically is incredible there's treasure on the other side of the wall of fire or the, or the journey to Mordor, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's like, there's something just beyond it that changes everything usually for the better. And so that's awesome. You know what I it's mean? Magic. So it, it's literal magic. Yeah. Like my, yeah. my, my buddy, Steve Gibb, his dad, uh, Barry, Barry Gibb, mm. like was like, don't fucking come in this room. Don't fucking come here. And for days, it was like, what the fuck is going on? And then he came out. He emerged from the room with a fucking yeah. cassette. Awesome. And it was, it was how deep is your love? And I was yes. like, bro, you're so <laughs> lucky you didn't fuck that up, bro. Right. So, you could have fucked that up. Like, yo, dad, pass me the ball. But then it's also right. sad, right? Because it's like, yeah. <laughs> But we we benefited from you not getting past the ball because if he t if he took the break and went out to pass the ball we wouldn't have how deep is your love but i do i do wonder because even in the worst in the worst case scenario for me like when i want to stab myself in the ears like when it's like and no offense to i mean who should i, I i'll say it like uh bare naked ladies that one that they were <laughs> and i know that dude's kind of got hard bars in it too right like the lawyer looking dude he's kind of got some bars yeah. <laughs> on the track um one week into that i don't even want to say it because now it's gonna fucking uh -huh. drill a hole in my brain again but that or right. like or the macarena or i don't know even <laughs> even um what's what's starship what was uh <laughs> we built this city i'm like stab my ear drums oh, out. right right but that's, that uh, that's so funny man <laughs> that probably bought multiple houses so they're probably like well fuck you i'm i'm sitting in my pool and yeah if you don't like it you don't like it but right it still is He's, magic i'll admit that <laughs> they're they're wiping the the tears of disappointment <laughs> that you didn't like their song away with hundred dollar bills <laughs> 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 they're oh, like no. we built this city towels like they have their own embroidered totally. like <laughs> um yeah and that's what's wild though is that they're i'm not gonna agree or disagree with you hint, hint, <laughs> about whether or not i like those songs but some people really do and there's something wild about that you know some people that's that that is some person's favorite track yeah what about the tracks that you know the track but you can't name the artist mm, like and that's, that's really how big wild phenomenon. like um take my breath away mm -hmm. and that one makes me want to stab my ears and my eyes <laughs> and that was written by a guy by the way was it mm -hmm. which is so wild so was like a virgin really who wrote let's see if we if brian can look it up okay uh here i'll uh, berlin Berlin was that Take was, My Breath Away. Yeah. But I'm quite certain it was written by the dude in the band. Do you I think could be wrong Lou, about that. Do you think Lou Bega wrote Mambo Number no. 5 or someone else <laughs> wrote it for him? One, what about one Scatman? <laughs> oh, man. Did Scatman oh, write Scatman? He must have. He, he, I hope so. But that's one, one was a big one, hit. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was. You know, one dude I won't jump on because he will he will he will fire shots back is um mm. James Blunt. Mm. Like he'll hear this. He will listen to this and he will he will want the smoke. So I will just say, you know what? A hit is a hit. How do you know that how do you know he's a uh how, what, what, what's the term you said strikes back but there's got to be a term for that anyway how do you know that he oh yeah back? he's he's because he's a real one i'm pretty sure like i think mm. i want to say he might have even responded to me when i first started the podcast mm. i'll have to go back and like look through the tweets i wonder if i could google that and see but but is he because he would get a lot of shit on twitter and he would go back and he would be like what are you going to do? Like, he, I think he, I think he might be British. And so like the yeah. usually British people are down to fight in real life. So he might be one of those <laughs> ones who, who lives by the, by the Mike Tyson code. Totally. He lives by the sword. I love it. Yeah. So his, for him. But, yeah. And listen, one is all you need, especially mm -hmm. like, what do you, like, what is your, what is your biggest song? And like, what's your, what was your biggest sync? Like, do you have like a Shrek? Like you don't get a Shrek check, do you? No, but we have uh, we have a track called Drive that came out in 1999. That still to this day is um, that's a smash. That's a hit. A, it still gets a lot of um, a lot of play. It just just two days ago, there's a new Netflix show called Beef. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, uh, friends of mine are saying it's a really really fun show. And then um, yesterday, at our studio, um, Chris Kilmore. I was like, have you seen the show Beef? It's fucking cool, man. And then I was watching it, and then they just started playing Drive. The main character with no an acoustic way. guitar started singing Drive. And then somebody sent it to me on Instagram. And um, I don't know the actor's name. He's the kid that was in um, The Walking Dead. Yeah, and Mayhem. But, I saw that movie Mayhem he's in. Shout and out to Joe Lynch. He's singing Drive, and he's singing it like better than me. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> he never... You just never know the what the life of a song is going to have, especially when you think back onto like the inception of the song. And I'm sure that you can attest to this, you know, having been, uh, when did you guys form? I've been seeing y'all's name for decades. It's been decades, right? Yeah, 94. Well, we got signed oh, okay. in like 97, 96, 97. And we then we got on them. Then. Yeah, we're, I think we're about the same age. I'm 45. Mm-hmm. I just turned 47 in February, but we, we got signed in 96. We started a band in 91. And, um, but anyway, we, Mikey wrote the guitar riff. It was just, just the guitar riff by itself, which is, you know, it's good enough on its own. Like it's a beautiful thing by itself. And he wrote it originally. And this is sometime in like late, late 1998. He was like a friend of mine's doing this, little indie film and they were asking for some for some music for the background some acoustic sounding thing and he's like but i wrote this and i kind of like it he's like what would you do to this and he played it for me in his car and um i was like you can't give this to the movie like I, you got to give me at least a week with this one and he's like okay cool and so i took it and i think within like two days i was singing the what became the chorus to the song and i sang it to mike and he's like dude that's fucking awesome and then we uh, started recording it and we were working with this um, producer named Scott Litt who we sought out because he had mixed Nirvana's Unplugged um, and he produced a bunch of REM records that we really liked. And uh, he heard the original iteration of that song. He's like, he, and he was the first one to say, he's like, that's a hit. And we'd never had like a hit before. So we were like, okay, cool. And we just went with it. But it's still, it's like 22 years later, it's still sort of like re rearing its ugly head here yeah, and there. It's magic. So, yeah, it's fun, man. It's super fun. Magic lives fun. on. Mm. And Netflix will, and hopefully you get that Netflix check. Right. <laughs> right. Like, because, because how does it work if he sings it? Right. Like, he's got to pay you the pub, or it's not like they have to license the master. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Hey, little dude, what you got? We have wow. I don't want. I don't want to keep you too much longer. And thank you so much for the time, Brandon. But I, I gotta say, I gotta go to the chat here because everybody was stoked you were coming on. And and our patrons, one of our patrons, Chris Larry says, "R.I.P. Scatman John." 
Oh, did he pass? Yeah, he was an army ranger, uh, wow. according to Alex Atkinson here in the chat. Um, listen, moves like Jagger, I'm sorry. I will stab my ears out. <laughs> I can't hear it ever again. And I know that's a, like... Adam's a super sweet dude. And the thing is, is he has a really great sense of humor. He probably would crack up hearing you say that. He's a good dude. Okay, good. Sorry, yeah. Adam. I'm sorry. You Listen, <laughs> I know for some people they want to hear it on loop, but for me, like that's like, if, if I had, like, if I had to torture somebody, I would probably play that song mm. just over for them. Either that yeah. one or um, actually I, sh I gotta be nice. See, I, I started out saying like I was going to, lead with kindness <laughs> <laughs> it's devolved into you know it's so funny i my partner and i've been watching south park again we've been revisiting south park and there's this episode where it's early episode where the grandpa in the wheelchair wants to die and he keeps saying kill me billy do you remember that whole thing yeah and he like is explaining to his grandson what it's like to be as old as he is and he locks his grandson in a room with him and he turns up orinoco flow by enya sail away oh. sail away and eventually the kid's like what this isn't that bad and after the third listen he's like ah kill me <laughs> and it also speaks to once again the relativity around uh, uh art and music um i've come full circle with enya as a result of the exposure to her by my my uh my partner who she just she plays Anya sometimes by herself while she's like cleaning her bathroom. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then I find myself singing Orinoco flow. I'm like, fuck, I kind of used to hate the song. Now I'm like, and I started asking like, why did you write this? So it went from like a, a, a morbid fascination into kind of a fascination with it. Now I'm full circle. I'm like, it's kind of a fucking awesome song, man. You know, <laughs> but all that being said, I guarantee you there are people listening to this or will be listening to this podcast who Incubus is that band for them. They're like, stab my fucking ears out. I cannot stand that guy's voice. I will do anything to not listen to it. And I will like fight someone to the death to, you know what I mean? Like just for sure, like hundred percent, which well, to me is kind of fun. <laughs> someone could love our band and then someone could hate it sort of like vociferously hate our band. So. <laughs> Well, fuck them. We that, we don't have to be nice to them. But Enya, I think we do. We do have to be nice with because she she'll she could Enya could probably pay somebody to make us both disappear, and it would be like like imagine if Enya was really hard, like she was gangster like that, because she lives in a castle and doesn't yes. leave supposedly. Yes. So I I would imagine yeah. like she would say here here's X amount of dollars and just come to my house and be like a table. And like, and I would, at some point the price would go up and I would, I would be literally on my hands and knees, like acting like a, a coffee table at Enya's <laughs> castle because or I talked at, shit. <laughs> at the very least, for some reason, the same goat just keeps showing up at your front door <laughs> and just staring at you with the darkest of eyes. You're like, Enya, <laughs> she sent this like cursed goat to your front door as you do from a castle somewhere in Europe. <laughs> yeah, some some black Philip type goat from the from the witch, right? Yeah, such a great movie. Oh my god, that movie is incredible. Well, please come back on when uh, when you have uh, new music to play, and it, no matter if it's hard as hell or if it sounds like Enya, and if if Enya wanted to go hard, she listen just to show at Gmail. If 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 Enya went metal mm -hmm. and needed production, could you mm -hmm. would you be down to do a co write with me for the Enya? 100 percent there there okay. are artists who are so far from the description of what you might consider like rock or metal or hard music that they are themselves metal you know what yes. i mean <laughs> like to me there's something kind of metal about enya you, yeah. you're nodding like that kind of makes sense to you but i don't know how to explain it but there is something sort of metal to enya i got my my partner a sticker that she has yet to put on her car but i'm hoping she will and maybe this is a great place to close but the sticker says I'd rather be crying to Enya. <laughs> and it's in like kind of like Celtic fonts, you know? <laughs> someone's gonna send someone's gonna send Enya. Someone's gonna send the hate breed logo, but it's gonna say Enya with the flames. And th someone's gonna do that as soon as this episode comes out. But epic. I'm so down yeah. for it.
<laughs> I'm, I'm down for it too. Brandon, thanks so much, man. And give our best to all the guys and, and a speedy recovery to Ben and, and good luck. And I, next time I got to do the top 10 uh, or top my Mount Rushmore of DJs in rock mm. groups because mm. Kilmore is the best name for a DJ ever. And that's his real name. So we didn't that's even get to name. talk about that. Yeah. DJ Kilmore is like the hardest <laughs> DJ name ever. So it shout out helps. to him. Yeah, he's the sweetest dude you'll ever meet too. He's like he's like the nicest guy in the world, and his last name is Kilmore. It's it's so awesome. Yeah. We'll save that for next time. But thank you so yeah. much, man. Have a great rest of your day. Have you fun too, with man. the dogs. And uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks everybody from Patreon. Uh, we'll be back very soon. All right, quick little outro. Let us know what you thought of today's show. Go to Josh's show at Gmail and let us know if you're going to subscribe over at gas digital network, gas digital.com. We don't need the network anymore. It's just gas digital. Keep it short and sweet. Buster. Leveling up, leveling up gas digital.com. Let us know if you subscribed recently, we'll give you a shout out on the show. Josh's show at Gmail and let us know what movies you want to watch for, for the, how awesome is this podcast, which will be coming back now that Howard is uh, almost done in the studio with Adam D and maybe he's going to let us hear some shit. Oh, from their uh, from their new jams. Yeah, yeah. Another another project. As I if, wouldn't put money on Howard giving us anything early. <laughs> no, never get any exclusive. Uh, as if he didn't need uh, another project. But this is going to be fun. Him and Adam D. And hopefully he'll come on and, and at least play us something or let us know when it's going to come out. So yeah, the How Awesome Is This podcast. We'll be back uh, this week. And um, support our sponsors if you can. And thank you, everybody, once again. If you came to Milwaukee Metal Fest, I know these episodes were out of order, but now I'm uh, I'm in Europe. We're playing, uh, by the time you hear this, we're playing in Poland with Pantera and Crowbar, and then we've got a bunch of festival shows. So we're going to get these episodes out as soon as we can. Uh, I will also post on patreon.com slash Josta what, what episodes are coming up. We're working on that now, so just give us a minute. In the meantime, support our sponsor, centurymedia.store. Check out the uh, Sanguasuga Bog, the Unearth. Also, they have uh, great new releases from bands like Lorna Shore and Jesus Peace and many others. Another great label that you should support is Metal Blade. You know them, you love them. And they got the new Death Ray Vision coming out June 30th. Go to metalbladerecords.com slash deathrayvision to pre-order. Support my boy Mike D and, and all, the, all the guys in Death Ray. They're killing it right now. The record sounds great. Got to thank monarchheavy.com. Monarch Heavy uh, was a was a great presence at uh, at the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Somnery kicked off the the whole festival, really the whole pre party and the whole fest. They set the vibe. You can get their new album Desiderium. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Go to MonarchHeavy.com. Use the promo code six six six. You'll save fifteen percent. Of course, our our longest running sponsor, IndieMerchStore.com. Where would we be without them? Thank you so much, Travis. Thank you so much, the whole Indie Merch Store crew. Um, Jody was there, who's grandma from King Diamond. You ever see King Diamond when he brings out grandma? Oh, that's great. She was there hanging at the indie merch store. Um, it was it was awesome to see them. Use promo code JOST at 10 and you'll save 10% off at indiemerchstore.com. And uh, last but certainly not least, well, no, no I got to plug Martyr Store, I got to plug my own site because we got leftover Milwaukee Metal Fest shirts, we got uh, the Dahmer shirt, we got bandanas, we got new crowbar restocks new crowbar tour merch we reprinted the old tour design kingdom of sorrow stuff oh yeah look at me looking like i'm 10 years old oh, uh, i saw that picture and i was like what who yeah, are you kirk and i reprinted <laughs> that's an that's an old uh jeremy saffer pick we, kirk and i reprinted 100 of those and signed them to put them in the web store big shout out to kirk they're going to europe too i'll see them i'll see them at grass pop and a bunch of the other fests but uh also thank you to prosthetic records use the promo code mmf 2023 that's mmf 2023 at shop.prostheticrecords.com pick up the new pupil slicer who everybody was digging on uh, on the patreon great name and the album's called The Blossom. It's getting great reviews right now. Okay, we will be back very, very soon with a new episode of the How Awesome, or a recent episode of the How Awesome. Is we're, we're a little, we're a little backlogged. We got, we got quite a few to show you guys. Yeah, we got a, we got a couple that that are coming up. And now that Howard's out of the studio, we will get some new episodes up on GasDigital.com. All right, everybody, drink your coffee, do your push-ups, listen to Death Metal. Bye bye. Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith. 
Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Brian St. Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Motson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arna Rock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.